met this lady, fell in love with her, but obviously it wasn't mutual, apparently. Oh, okay. Uh, got her pregnant, mm. and she broke up with me a month before our baby was born because I started, I started like, getting complacent, I guess. <laughs> So my friend, you said you're homeless. Yes, sir. Um, how long have you been homeless? About a year and a half now. I've had spurts of it for about going on four years now. But well, crazy. I've been in a halfway house. Is awesome. So what do you think is holding you back from not being homeless? Right now, it's really hard to say. It's my daughter, really. Daughter? How old is your daughter? A year and a half. I'm old. A year and three months old. I'm well, crazy. Yeah. So, oh wow, so do you know where she is? Yeah, she's in Candler. Candler, so she, her mother's watching her? Okay, so you, you're trying to get uh, out of your homeless situation this way you can be with your daughter more maybe? Yeah. Okay, good. What's your name? Brooks. Brooks, I'm Eric. Brooks, uh, is there anything more you can enlighten the, the YouTube community on uh, how you got about being homeless, that kind of thing? First started off with uh, came here in three years ago for, for rehab. Stayed clean for about a year and a half. I suggest staying away from women for about a year, two years after getting clean. Um, met this lady, fell in love with her, but obviously it wasn't mutual. Apparently. Oh okay. Uh, got her pregnant, mm -hmm. and she broke up with me. A month before our baby was born because I started I started like getting complacent I guess complacency is, is really big and staying clean you can't get complacent with it. yeah and you got to be active right you got to be active you got to stay you got to stay above you got to stay above water really you can't you can't get comfortable with yourself it's, it's hard to explain but yeah up with me. Uh, I didn't find out my daughter was born until three days after the fact. Mm. I tried killing myself. Uh, I got a good bit of heroin and wound up in the hospital. Wow. And I didn't find out my daughter was born until three days after the fact. Wow. Sorry to hear that, man. Yeah. That's tough. It is tough. It's really, really tough. Dude. How are you handling the cooler weather now? Were you standing in a tent? Um, Kind of couch surfing in a way. Oh, okay. Uh, but not really. Five days out of the week, I'm, I'm out here. So I'm just trying to trying to survive, really. Yeah, good. Kind of, with with all the churches that feed you and whatnot, you have to you have to kind of like bounce bounce around a lot. So has uh, Salvation Army helped or uh, one of those rescue missions? Hope helps out a lot, but that's more of like a waiting game. Okay. They help you actually get into your own apartment and whatnot. Right. But the waiting list is so long. Yeah, I hear that. Especially with the, it's sad to say, especially the white male with no custody of kids, the waiting list is going to be a lot longer rather than with a, a woman with a kid, you know. And you're saying if they're, if they're a minority, they have a better chance? They have a better chance. I'm okay. Not, I'm, not, I'm not racist. No, no, you're stating a fact, right? Yeah. That's it. You're not being racist, you're stating a fact. Yeah. That's good, man. Uh, and uh, how do you see yourself out of this situation? Waiting game with Ahab, really. Yeah. They hate so there's nothing you can really do. Uh, and, yeah. Dude, I can get clean. I can, I can go to detox. I can do all this, but detox is just... It's it's really painful. Like the detox programs around here don't help you with suboxone, methadone, etc. Like they don't help you with anything like that. They just give you a, a, a butyrol or whatever it's called. And butyrol. It's it's just really a blood thinner, nerve medicine. Wow. And I really need suboxone. I've been using opiates for ten years. Like. So a suboxone would help with the opioids. Yeah. Have you done uh, fentanyl? Yeah. That's yeah, my son OD'd on it twice. Yeah, it's pretty rough. He's clean now. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Of course, the, the marijuana. Yeah, I mean, I, I, used to, I used to smoke all the time back in high school, but not anymore. Yeah, I smoked for 25 years, and 
quit for the better part of 15 years so far now. Good. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. I never thought I'd stop. It's just being out here, the, the, like, most people don't have hope. That's really what it is. Like, you gotta have hope that there's a better day That's coming. exactly right, hope. You gotta have hope that there's a better day coming. So that, that's really good. Yeah. That's good that you got hope, right? That's yeah. excellent. Um, you have anything to add to tell the people maybe uh, how uh, officials could handle this situation? And have you noticed that an influx or more people getting homeless? I have noticed a lot more people around here. Uh, I think that people think that Asheville is more of a sanctuary to come to be homeless. That's interesting. And I really don't think it is. I oh, okay. I, I don't think it is. I think that that we really just need to try our hardest to stray away from being homeless rather than being comfortable with it. Like, like I say, complacency. Like, you, get, you can't be complacent with yourself. Right. You gotta, you gotta understand that homelessness is not, is not the goal. Like, your goal is to strive, like, strive to better yourself rather than, like I said, be complacent with yourself. Wow. You're always gonna strive to better, better yourself. Excellent interview. You, you really well spoken. You gonna do any school? No, I, I, it's sad to say, but I dropped out when I was in tenth grade. Congratulations! Oh, tenth grade, I really? Out when I was in tenth grade. Well, it's a good thing you're not in college, because, uh, in my opinion, anyway, <laughs> because what they're teaching now, eh, it's uh, not quite science. Really? Yeah, in my opinion. So, hey, nice talking to you, man. You too, man. Let's see what we got, man.